Hello, and welcome to a digital mathematics lecture for Salt Lake Community College. In this video, we're going to continue through module 9 in Math 1030. We're going to be talking about the second section here, conditional probability. Now, this video and the video following will likely not be as long as the previous one. Um, the previous one had a lot to discuss, just the introduction of what probability is as in general. That's a lot there. Um, but I wanted to separate out conditional probability because it is a very important topic and it does cause... Um, some more issues than other probability problems. So I wanted to separate this one out to focus on it specifically. Now to talk about conditional probability, I have an example here that we should be able to solve using uh, what we talked about in the previous video. So I recommend pausing, seeing if you can find this on your own, and then unpausing to see how you did. We have, in your drawer, you have 10 pairs of socks, six of which are white. If you reach in and randomly grab two pairs of socks, what is the probability that both are white? Both is a very specific keyword for us. That is going to refer us to and probability. Because both means that the first pair of socks are white and the second pair of socks are white. So probability that both are white is the same as the probability that the first is white and the second pair of socks is white. So what we, that means that we're going to use the multiplication rule, which I already have written out down here uh, because we had this last time. So what we're going to do is find the probability of the first one being white times the probability that the second one is white, given that the first one was. Well, I'll write that below it. The probability of the first one being white, there are six socks that are white out of the total of 10. So that should be six out of 10 for the first pair of socks. Then, since I just grabbed two pairs of socks, what that means is that the second one, or the first one was not put back in. So given that I uh, took that first pair of socks and they were white, was the probability that the second one is white. Well, there's only nine other pairs of socks, one less than how many total there was. And likewise, since I already took a pair of white socks, there's only five pairs of so white socks remaining. If I multiply those two together, what I get is a total of 30 out of 90. So five times, uh, six times five is 30, 10 times nine is 90. This is also 0.33 or 33%. All these represent the same thing. Okay, now I wanted to talk about that example first as a warm-up and kind of a review from last time, and also because what we're going to talk about is how we find this specific probability itself. How we find the probability of one thing happening given something else had occurred. That is what we're going to focus on now. We're going to do specific problems of finding just a conditional probability, not and or or. Well, to talk about that, what we're going to do is find the formula for conditional probability by taking the formula for the multiplication rule and reorganizing it or deconstructing it. We want to find just this, the probability of f given e. And in order to find that, if we isolate this by dividing over probability of e, what we get is the probability of E and F divided by, we divide this over, and we get the probability of E. That's going to be the formula for conditional probability. The probability that they both happen over the probability of just one of them. And the one on the bottom is very, 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 very important. Notice that here, this is the probability of E on the bottom. That is going to line up with the condition here. So whatever my condition e here is, the given E, that's going to be the probability that was on the bottom. If I had probability of, say, A and B, then that means on the bottom, I'm going to have the probability of specifically B. 
it's going to be very important for us to find whichever one is on the bottom. The one on top actually is not as relevant because probability of a, uh, whoa, that should say given, not and. It's probably a given B. Um, the one on top should be and, but probability of A and B or B and B, B and A is exactly the same thing. So A and B or B and A, those are exactly the same thing. So they're interchangeable. Um, like if I got a uh, probability of getting an ace and a two on a deck in a deck of cards from drawing two cards. Well, if I got an ace and a two or a two and an ace, that's the same thing. So it doesn't really matter. What you can also do for this probability is link it to how we represent probability in the past by using n instead to talk about how big something is. So n of e and f over n of e. And this is more how we're going to use conditional probability. This just is the number of outcomes in a and b. And this is the number of outcomes in E. That's going to be a lot easier. That way we don't have a fraction over a fraction or a decimal over a decimal. We can more usually in most instances talk about this as a whole number over another whole number. All right. This is how we're going to find conditional probability. And we have a couple examples moving forward. First, a relatively basic one, and then a couple that are going to be a lot more like what you'll see in the homework uh, for a few different specific examples, and, and some that are very important to get down. OK, this table summarizes the 983 pedestrian deaths that were caused by automobile accidents. So 983 is going to be our total. That's our sample space. So that's S. Uh, if one death is selected, what's the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated given the driver was not intoxicated? What we have here is a two-way table to help us with this. We have the pedestrian not in, being intoxicated, yes or no. We have the driver being intoxicated, yes or no. And what we have are the different values next to them. So we have that four-day instances where both of them were intoxicated. We have 85 where the ped pedestrian was not and the driver was we have 223 where the pedestrian was and the driver was not. Notice that I'm combining all those with the word and. What we're also going to need to find are the totals beside each of these. So the total here and the total here. For a pedestrian intoxicate, we have 43 plus 223. So 43 plus 223 will give me 271. And we have 85 plus 627. That should give me 712. If I add those two together, that they better give me 983, and they do. And then if I add the rows together, I get 48 plus 85. Gives me 133. And 223 plus 627 gives me 850. Also, these two sum up to 983. I need to find these because what I'm basically building is my full sample space. I'm bu building all the different values that I have or could possibly work with. For A, we want the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated. So I'll say probability of pedestrian sub I. So the pedestrian was intoxicated given that the driver was not intoxicated, so N-I. I like to use subscripts. I, I think it's a lot easier, at least to uh, reduce it down. Well, to find this probability, we have given here, so we're going to set this up appropriately. We want on top the probability of the pedestrian being intoxicated and the driver not being intoxicated out of the condition. My condition here is uh, the driver not being intoxicated, so this should be out of the probability of the driver not being intoxicated.
If I even read the situation, it says the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated given the driver was non-intoxicated. That means I'm only really talking about these cases right here. I'm only talking about the in the uh oh the driver not being intoxicated. Sorry. Um, given the driver was not intoxicated, so I'm only talking about these cases here where the driver was not intoxicated. Those are the only situations I'm talking about, those 850 cases. I'm not talking about all 983 anymore. My entire sample space was not necessary anymore. I'm only talking about a specific group of them. Here then, on the bottom, the probability that the, the driver was not intoxicated or how many or instances where the driver was not intoxicated, there were 850 of them. And of those, how many where the pedestrian was intoxicated? That gives me 223. That would be my conditional probability. How many different outcomes considered? I'm considering the 850 where the driver is not intoxicated. And of those 850 cases, so of these 850 cases, 223 of them had instances where the pedestrian was intoxicated. That's how we're going to do uh, conditional probability. You'll note that this will uh, change and almost always change the denominator to be something different than the overall sample space of 983. And 983 will just consider all possible outcomes, but we're not considering all possible outcomes anymore. Only the outcomes that have a specific quality. Now with that in mind, I recommend trying B on your own, pausing the video, and see how you did. Uh, what is the probability that the driver was intoxicated given uh, the pedestrian was, uh, yeah, probability the driver was intoxicated given the pedestrian was intoxicated? First thing, we focus on the given condition, given that the pedestrian was intoxicated. That means that we're only talking about the instances where the pedestrian was intoxicated. So we're talking about these cases here. We're only talking about the 271 instances where the pedestrian was intoxicated. So the probability the driver was intoxicated given the pedestrian was intoxicated, we write as a probability of both over probability of the pedestrian being intoxicated. That's our given condition here. That's what we need to focus on. That's what you always focus on first in conditional probability. Who am I really considering? In this situation, I'm not considering all 983. I'm only considering the 271 instances where the pedestrian was intoxicated. And of those, how many where the driver was intoxicated? It's 48. So 48 out of 271. This is how conditional probability works, and it can be a little bit uh, daunting at first. Just try a few examples of these, and uh, they become a lot more uh, simple. The main thing to always keep in mind is what is the given condition, or what is the assumed value? That's the thing that you need to focus on, because that's the uh, people that you're going to consider first and foremost. You're not gonna consider everybody in the grouping anymore, only those of that condition. Okay, so this is an example. You'll see some with two-way tables like this and it should be uh, pretty easy to pick out the values. Very often the totals will also be given to you. Um, however, there are a couple examples on the homework that I do want to talk about, specifically those that have to deal with uh, viruses. A pretty uh, apt topic to consider right now. Um, so let's talk about these. First, we have a virus infects one in every 400 people. A test used to detect the virus is positive 90% of the time if a person has the virus and positive 10% of the time if the person does not have the virus. Find the probability of A given B and the probability of A complement given B complement where A is infected and B is positive result. Okay, so that sounds kind of complicated. There's a lot going on here. First, let's, let's take out what we know. We have first, the virus infects one in every 400 people. 
that's going to be the first piece of information we're going to work with. And what we're going to do with this is create a two-way table of our own, kind of like what we had in the last situation. On the top here, I'll represent A or infected. And then we'll also have uh, A complement or not infected. And we'll also have a total. What I'm going to compare that to is B, which is positive, and B complement, which is negative. You can also just write A complement and B, A and B complement and B instead of infected and positive. I like to know as much information as possible. And then we're also going to have the total down here as well. This is going to be the best way to organize all the information that we have, because there's going to be a lot. First, we have uh, the virus infects one in every 400 people. We're going to work with that piece of information first before we go on to anything else. And that's typically how we're going to address these. Work with the first piece of information, deal with that, and then move on. A virus infects one every 400 people. Well, that means that we need to consider an overall total amount of people. We could consider 400 people. However, that's not really going to be good. Um, what I would say, the reason why this would not be too great is because if I have that the virus infects one in every 400 people, then that means of a total of 400 people, one of them total are infected and 399 are not infected. That's not going to work out too well because we want some whole numbers in here. So what we're going to do is add a zero to this, at least one of them, maybe two. Um, let's do two just to have a bigger number. So of the 40,000 people, I'd have that 100 are infected and 39,900 are not infected. I'm just coming up with an arbitrary number here. So this is completely arbitrary. However, the recommendation is to come up with a large enough number so that the values that you'll be using in the rest of the table are whole numbers. Uh, whole numbers are the easiest thing to work with by far, so we try to work with those instead. Okay, uh, so keep that in mind that it is arbitrary. A lot of instances, what they will sometimes use uh, a very common a uh, common value for n or your sample size is 100,000. It's a very common number to use, um, and I will actually use that in the next example. The only reason I use four, uh, one that starts with a 4 here is because we have 1 in every 400, so it's a more convenient number, I think. Okay, but know that this is an arbitrary number. I just wanted something big enough to make some other values here. And to find each of these, you could do 40,000 times one out of every 400. So uh, 40,000 or 40K times one out of 400. That's what the virus infects, should give you 100. And then if you take that away from 40,000, you get 39,900, the complement or A bar. Okay, so we're building all those. Then what we're going to do is use the next piece of information. Each piece of information is going to be, give me two values in this table, and we'll fill out the rest. A test used to detect the virus is positive 90% of the time if a person has the virus. That's our next piece of information. So positive 90% of the time if a person has the virus. That second part is very important. That's going to be... Uh, our condition. So if a person has a virus means given that they have a virus, given that they are infected, it's positive 90% of the time. So that means if I do 100 times 90% or 0 0.90, I get 90. And that's how many are positive and infected. I used... Um, yeah, I used if the person has the virus, so I'm only considering those 100 people, 90% of them would uh, have a positive result. Then that thusly means that 10 of them are going to have a negative result, the complement. 
That way, 90 plus 10 equals 100. So this column should add up just like this row added up. Then I'm going to use my next piece of information. Positive 10% of the time if the person does not have the virus. Likewise, it says if the person does not have the virus. So that means we're considering this situation right here. So we're considering this case where we do not have the virus. They're not infected. And it's positive 10% of the time for them. If I do 39,900, and if I do that times 10%, so I'll write that over here, 39,900 times 0 0.10, I get 3,990. That's how many of them have a positive result. So 3,990. If I take that away from 3,900 uh, or 39,900, I get 35,910. And again, I just found that by using a complement. Uh, 39,900 minus 39,090. So 39,900 minus 3,990 3, should give me the 35,000. Notice every information piece that was given to me, one in every four, 400, gave me two pieces of information. It gave me these bottom two down here. Uh, person, The 9% of the person, uh, if they have the virus, gave me these two. The 10% of the time gave me these two. So it always gave me two pieces of information. And there's two slots that are still missing, but no more information given. However, I don't need any more information because I should be able to solve this. 90 plus 3,990, so if I add straight across this row for B, I get 4,000 80. And if I add straight across here for B complement, I get 35,920. And if I check 4,080 plus 35,920 does add up to 40,000. So all my ducks are in a row per se. Now we needed to find all this so we can calculate our probabilities that were requested. So first probability of A given B. Well, that's going to be the probability of A and B over the probability of, okay, say right now if you know which one it is, if it's either A or B, should be the probability of B. All right, so then for B, we have up here, this row, there's, for B, we're only considering this 4,080, so we're only considering down here, 4,080 people, and of them, how many of them are A and B, are positive and infected? We have 90 out of 4,080. That would be my answer there. We can also use this table to find probability of A bar given B bar. If you haven't already, try pausing the video, see if you can find out this one. Probability of A bar and B bar, or all these are complements, over probability of B complement. That means on the denominator, we're only considering B complements. We're only considering the 35,920. And of them, 35,910 are not infected. So of those with the negative results, 35,910 are not infected. And that'd be our answer for the second one. Now you can change both of these in the decimals to see how extreme these are, particularly the second one should be very, very high, it should be 0.99 something, and the second one not going to be as high. This is how you would work through a lot of these different examples. Now I know that these can be kind of tricky, and so I want to do one more of them. So let's go down to a second example. 
Okay, we have here that a certain disease has an incidence rate of 0.4%. Uh, so 0.4%, make sure that you recognize that 0.4% means 0 0.004 if you move the decimal place back two places. If the false negative rate is 5% and the false positive rate is 3%, compute the probability that a person who tests positive actually has a disease. Then compute the probability that a person who tests negative does not have the disease. Okay, so that we're going to find basically the probabilities we had in the last situation. Most of the time we're looking for these ones. Okay, so uh, in this case, I'm again going to consider disease and no disease. And then a total. And then we have also uh, positive and negative and then a total. Okay, let's see if I can color code these. A certain disease has an incidence rate of 0.4%. So that's going to be our first piece of information that we're going to look for. And I'm going to color code this with green. Okay, so uh, in this situation, I'm going to use an uh, arbitrary sized uh, total, and I'm going to use 100,000 for a total. A good thing to keep in mind, if your total isn't big enough, basically if you did not use enough zeros, just add on another zero, and that should add zeros onto all your places, or it should move decimals back. Um, so if you start seeing decimals, you can always make this bigger if you don't like them. I think they're kind of ugly, so I like to get rid of them if I can. So what I'm going to do is 100,000, and then I'm going to do times... 0 0.004 to find how many of them have the disease. So if I do 100,000 times 0 0.04, or 0 0.004, sorry, you should get 400. And that means that 400 of them have the disease. If I then take a complement, so if I do 100,000 minus 400, I should get 99,600. So that should be how many of them do not have the disease of that total. So that's my first piece of information. Then what we have is that well, we have that the false negative rate is 5%. Now what a false negative uh, means is that it was a negative result, but they actually have the disease. So a false negative, so I will use, let's say, let's do blue here. Yeah. False negative rate is 5%. That's talking about right here. Negative, and they have the disease. That would be a false negative. They had a negative result saying that they do not have the disease, but they actually do. So that means that we need to take, whoop, we need to take 400 So we need to take 400 and I'm going to multiply that by my false negative rate of 5%. So 0 0.05, and that should give me an answer of 20. 400 times 0 0.05, just making sure, yeah. So that means 20 of them had the disease, and they had a negative result. Likewise, if I do the complement, I have 400 minus 20 should give me 380. That's how many had a positive result with the disease. Then we have one more piece of information to consider. 
Okay, so the false positive rate is 3%. Um, that one I'm going to, let's use maybe red. Yeah, let's use red. So I'm going to say false positive rate is 3%. So that means that we're considering positive, but that's false. So that means they had a positive result, but they actually do not have the disease. So that's this value right here. So then we're going to take the total of 99,600 people that do not have the disease. And of them, if I multiply that by 3%, I should get how many of them tested positive. So 99,600 times 0 0.03 in your calculator should give you 2,988. So 2,988. So if you do 99,600, if you take 2,988 away from that to find how many tested negative, you get 96,612. So 96,612. So those are all our values there. Lastly, we should be able to put everything back together. And we should be able to find our totals here by adding everything up. So if I do 380 plus 2,988, so 380 plus 2,988, I get 3,368. And if I do 20 plus 96,612, I get 96,632. And just to make sure, if you add these two together, they should add up to 100,000, and they do. All right, so that's me going through step-by-step step making that table. Now, all the stuff that I did over here, these calculations on the side, you do not need to show these, or you shouldn't have to. Um, this is for you to know how I calculate everything and how I did everything step-by-step, color-coded. So I did the green, I did the certain disease first. So first two pieces of information, blue, red, and the last two. So every time I, f I should find a pair by calculating one of them and then find the complement for the other. However, making the table is not the answer to the question. We want the probability that uh, a person who tests positive actually has a disease. So that means that they have the disease given they tested positive. That's what it means to be if they tested positive uh, or a person who tests positive, that's my condition here. And then we also want the probability that the person who tests negative does not have the disease. So we want the probability that the uh, person who tested negative does not have the disease. Sorry. Sorry, person who tests negative, so we're only considering those with the negative result, uh, do not have the disease. So I'll say no disease. All right. Well, this first one, uh, probability of a disease given positive. So that means we're considering those that tested positive. So of the 3,368, how many of them have the disease? 380 of them did. Of those that tested negative, so that means of the 96,632 that tested negative, how many of them do not have the disease? That's 96,612. So those are our two answers there. And again, you can calculate those in two decimals or percentages if you so please. All right, so these look like a lot of work. Um, most of this becomes a lot faster the more you do it. Uh, so setting up this table becomes easier and easier because you're probably not writing out all these steps, at least after the first few times of trying it out. Um, but definitely give these a shot immediately after watching this video. There's a couple of these on the homework, and I think there's uh, one or two on the quiz as well. Um, they're very important for you to know and to test out. 
Um, but with that said, that's everything that I have for this video. It's a little bit shorter just because it's focusing on this specific topic. Uh, I hope this helped, and um, remember that there's going to be a third video for probability that's going to go into expected value problems. Uh, with that said, I hope you have a nice day.